In the previous video, we learned how to replace the watch option using the composition API. However, we only had a look at data that was created using the ref function. In this video, let's see what are the differences in the watch API when working with the reactive function. I'm going to begin by importing reactive from view. We also need two refs for the return statement, so import it as well. Next, I'm going to call the reactive function and pass in an object. So const state is equal to reactive. And let's add f name, empty string, l name, empty string as the two properties. I'm going to return state using the two refs function. Spread it to refs and pass in state. In the template, I will bind f name and l name to input elements using the vmodel directive. So make a copy of the input elements and change the placeholder to reactive first name reactive last name and we model is going to be f name and l name now let's add the watcher for this reactive reference we already know the watch syntax watch and this accepts two arguments the first argument is the data source and this is state we then add the function that needs to be executed when one of the state properties value changes. So function, this receives new value and old value as arguments. And within the function body, let's log to the console the individual new and old values. So console log f name old value is going to be old value dot f name and make copies of this the second log is going to be f name new value l name old value and l name new value nothing different from the watcher we have created in the previous video of course i've just used a normal function instead of an arrow function let's save the file and head to the browser to test this out on page load we have the two inputs from the reactive state. Let's change the first name value and observe the logs in the console. When I type in the letter V, we have the logs, but if you closely observe for the F name property, both old and new values are the same. If I finish typing in Vishwas, for every keystroke, old and new values remain the same. This is also the case with L name as well. I type in code evolution and you can see the old and new values are the same. So this is a point to make note of about the reactive function. When you pass in a reactive object as the data source, the old and new values will be the same and that is the intended behavior. Now if that is the case, how do we get hold of the old values? We might need it after all. Well, the way to get what we want is instead of specifying the reactive object as the data source, we specify a copy of just the values of the object. So our first argument now becomes a getter function. So instead of state, arrow function, and within the arrow function, we return an object where we spread state. If we now go back to the browser and start filling in the name, you can see that the old value is different from the new value, which is what we would expect it to be. So we have our watcher working, but at the moment, for changes in either f name or l name, the same function is executed. If we had 10 different properties, the same function would execute for all 10 properties, which is not always favorable. So let's add a watcher for only the fname property. 
I'm going to comment out this watcher so as to not interfere with our logs in the browser. Now let's add the watcher for f name. Watch and this accepts two arguments. The first argument is the data source and this is state.fname. We then add the function that needs to be executed when the fname value changes. So function which receives new value and old value. We are simply going to log to the console fname old value which is old value and fname new value which is new value. If we now save the file and head to the browser, in the console we in fact see a warning. Invalid watch source. A watch source can only be a getter function, a ref, a reactive object or an array of these types. So when watching individual properties in a reactive object as well, we need to use a getter function. So the first argument is an arrow function which returns state.fname. Head back to the browser, refresh and we don't see the warning anymore. Type in fname and we see the old and new values. So that is about watching individual properties in a reactive object. The final point to discuss is about deep watchers. To the state reactive object, let me add another property, options. And this is an object which contains a property called hero name set to an empty string. In the template, I'm going to duplicate an input and set the vmodel directive to options dot hero name. Placeholder is reactive hero name. Let's now watch this options object. So instead of state dot f name, state dot options. If I save the file and head back to the browser and type in the hero name field, which is a property in the options object, we see no log statements in the console. If you need to check for changes of properties in a nested object like options, we need to set the deep option to true for the watcher. So in our watch function, the third argument is an object where we set deep to true. If we now head back to the browser and type in the hero name, we see the log statements in the console with the old and new values. However, old value is equal to the new value like before. In order to fix this, you need to make a deep copy of the options object. Now you can use any utility library you want to, but I'm going to use Lodash to quickly demo the example. In the terminal, run the command yarn add Lodash. Once the installation completes, Import it in the script block. Import underscore from Lodash. In the watcher argument, we now use the clone deep function from Lodash and pass in the options object. So underscore dot clone deep pass in state dot options. Clone deep. Save the file, head back to the browser. And now when I type in hero name, you can see the old value and the new values are different. So that is about the usage of watch function with a reactive object and about the deep option to watch nested properties. If it seems a bit hard to understand, please rewatch the video and practice the code simultaneously. I guarantee you, it'll start to make much more sense. All right then, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.